Hello, beloved brethren. Praise our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Uh, we're going to finish this. Hallelujah. Um, we're in Ezekiel 13.10. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give him glory and pray for me before I go out on the streets today to talk about Jesus, to speak what the word of God is saying today, which is a lot in Revelation and Deuteronomy. Okay, so here we are, Ezekiel 13, verse 10. Because even because they have seduced my people, saying peace, and there was no peace, and one built up a wall, and lo, others daubed it with untempered mortar. The Lord has shown me that they claimed peace with the native indigenous tribes. Tribes, when you read the scriptures, tribes were his people. And in Genesis, he says, after 400 years, he'll turn and judge those nations who came against his tribes and showed them no mercy. Showed them no mercy and that they seduced them with uh, alcohol and different things. Um, so seduce his people and they said, peace. Oh, we have peace. We come in peace. What they do? They stole the land, destroyed the land, and look around. This is the epistle of Jude where God is telling them all their deeds, and they continue to do this. They claim peace, they claim treaties, and they continue to say they're going to help do this and do that to help the hurt of, of hit the daughter of God's people, the, the hurt of the daughter of Zion. They say, we're going to help you, we're going to give you some money, or we're going to do this, but they really have never helped them. Even the laws that they have made, um, I'm going to put a video in the description box, a very important video to watch and listen to our, my brother. He's a native Indian and he talks about the laws that they have done in order to keep the natives oppressed. The way that they have done is very crafty, cunning craftiness, it says in the book of Revelation of Je or Jesus Christ, he calls them sorcerers and they're crafty works. They're merchants of the earth. And we see their merchandise everywhere. You can go into stores and buy their merchandise every day. You can go on a lot and buy some mer car merchandise. So you see that these are the, the kings of the earth, the mighty men, the merchant men, and their judges in Deuteronomy, it talks about their judges. See, God's judges are just. The just shall live by faith. Those that are truly sincere, genuine Christian, born again believers, they judge in righteousness. They're spiritual. The spiritual man judgeth all things. Okay, the natural man cannot understand it because they're natural. Their 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 idea is earthly, natural things. They don't have the love of God in their heart. They don't have the love for their neighbor. They practice covetous practices. The scriptures say, covetousness is idolatry. They coveted the natives' lands. They coveted the natives' resources. They coveted the natives, the bodies, the hearts, the minds of people, which God calls the heart of his people, earth. So they went after the earth of their heart. That's why God says, rend your heart, circumcise your heart. That's where we're supposed to love God, is keep his commandments, believe him and keep his commandments. So that heart... And we do that because he wrote it in our heart and mind. Whenever, whenever we go into the kingdom, we'll have a, a fullness of that. Okay, Whenever we are gathered up into the kingdom of paradise where there's no death or dying. Um, even right now, he's gathering us spiritually in, in a, in, up into the kingdom. And we are in the kingdom. We're quickened by the spirit in the new in the uh, temple. We are the temple of living God. Before, we were the temple of death and destruction. But now we've believed God's report. Hallelujah. And we're saved. Hallelujah. And um, it's real important that we understand that the God's judges, God's peace officers, police, like, like police officers, they will bind and, 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 and put chains and fetters on the wicked. <laughs> this is spiritual right now. We're bringing down all strongholds, all thoughts. Okay, so the devil is after our thoughts, he's after our mind and our heart, and then he gets the body. That's how he does it. He goes, uh, he crouches, as a, uh, humbles himself and says, oh, I come in peace, and then he deceives, and then he draws men away after him, and that's what the apostles said. They said, you know, grievous wolves will come and not spare the flock, and they will draw men after themselves, okay? Rather than being drawn by Christ, by the word of God, by the high priest and king, Jesus Christ, are the bishop of our soul. He is supposed to redeem our soul, our mind, our heart, our, and then our body, all of it. But the devil has come after the flock and hasn't spared it. So God is fighting for 
his flock, his inheritance, beloved. These are his people, his inheritance. The devil and his army has swallowed up his inheritance and tried to steal them away from God with all of their idolatries and their covetous practices and all their groves and all their slain of the wicked in the, in the groves and their idols everywhere. You can go to any street and probably find idols everywhere, big altars to Baal and different statues that they bow down to worship and their trinkets in their pockets and all the things that they do that the scriptures speak of. These are the other nations. These are not God's children. Many of them claim to be God's children, but they're not. They lie. In Revelation, it says that those that say they are Jews, but do lie and are the synagogue of Satan. They're not God's children. He says, I will bring them before you to the Philadelphia church in, church in Asia. He says, I will bring them before your feet and they will bow before you. Okay, those that claim to be the chosen people. Not all of them. There's a remnant in even in Israel, the nation uh, state, but God's people are spread in all corners of the earth in every nation, tribe, and tongue. His people, his true people, the remnant, okay? They don't have sorcery in them. They don't have lies or deceit. And we see the scriptures talk about they lie in order to devour us. But God's going to redeem his people. Praise the Lord. So what's closest to this? Isaiah. So the way of peace, they don't they don't know the way of peace themselves. They 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 have pleasures in the earth. But these pleasures are temporal and there's no peace in them because they're devouring other people. And what happens when you hurt others, you're hurting yourself. Okay, so Isaiah 59 verse 8, it says, The way of peace they know not, and there is no judgment in their goings. They have made them crooked paths. So they have crooked judges, beloved. That's why the policies are evil. The policies we're seeing in the Education Act where those proclaiming Jewish rabbis went in to the executive office with the president and made laws to teach children all of this stuff about transgender and the LGBTQ movement and about how to, and, and within it, there's worms, serpents in all of their symbols and everything and rainbows. These are the serpents. The serpent is in, involved in this because they want to possess, they want to rule over mankind, and they start at a very young age in order to take the next generation. And so how do they do it? They do it by teaching them the ways of the wicked, of evil. So get your children, teach them the ways of God, okay? And because this is not the way of God, you don't have to obey it. According to the scriptures, if you're a child of God, you don't have to do wicked, evil things that are abominations to the Lord. God will protect you. God will protect your family. And he's going to judge those kings of the earth and those princes of the earth who made these laws. He's going to judge them and, and strike them down. He's going to judge them harshly. He's going to judge those, those nations who are turning people into wickedness. So just wait. Watch the hand of the Lord. It's about ready to strike the wicked. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. Okay, so if you go after their crooked paths, the serpent's path, you're not going to know peace. Those children will not know peace if, if you allow the wicked to take your children. So protect your children from these predators. That's what they are. They're predators. Okay, Proverbs 6, 18. They're, they're demons, devils, principalities, and powers of the air. Okay, Verse 18, and heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that shed. Okay, these are things that the, the these six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. These are all the things that revelation of Jesus Christ, the mother of harlot and abominations of earth. She does all of these things. And all of the abominations you read throughout the scriptures, that's all that they do. That's what they do. That's what they teach to draw men away after them to draw their heart away from God and the ways of God, the ways of life, the ways of the commandments of Jesus Christ, to hate one another, to cause strife and contention, arguments. You know, this is what those these evil spirits do. Feet that, that, that be swift in, run, in running to mischief. They're mischievous, it says in the scriptures. And their tongue is like the serpent's tongue, like poison of the serpent's tongue. Ugh. Verse 19, a false witness that speaketh lies. These are the children of, of um, iniquity, the falsehood makers. It says in, I think, another place in Isaiah where, who is this that 
makes wide their tongue, sticks out their tongue. Is this not the mischievous, the, the children of falsehood or something like that? That's what they do. They do it in, in, um, they, in, for their idol Shiva, which is a Hindu God that they worship. Okay. We don't worship these serpent gods. So when they stick out their tongue, you know, eventually they turn into serpents, I believe, because God says they're, they're, it's poison. They're, their lies, their falsehoods are poison. And in Revelation, you see those that are outside the temple of God. Those are not born again in the temple of God because we are the temple. He says, anyone who destroys this temple, God will destroy. They are teaching their children to do these practices and it destroys them. Okay. That they're destroying their own children, beloved. It's, it's absolutely abomination. God has shown me this. But they, they, it says in Revelation that they loveth and maketh a lie. They love to do it. Okay, so this is abomination to the Lord. And that he that soweth discord among brethren, they are the ones that caused all the strife and contention. They're the ones that set up false Christians in order to, to make people hate being a Christian, hate Christianity. That's what they did. They did it on purpose to turn people away from, uh, from believers, from people that follow Jesus, to make him look to change his image into an abominable thing. Um, people like Hitler, they put up as a Christian or people like, you know, many of them, they've set up these wolves in sheep's clothing. And God says, is not, um, doesn't Satan appear as an angel of light? You know, we're supposed to be light in the world, but they have turned the image of Christ and the ways of life into crooked ways, into a broad way that leads to destruction and abominations of the earth. So, and he that soweth discord among brethren, and they sow discord among the brethren. That's why I always say, beloved, love all people, no matter what we're learning about them. We're to love our enemies. It is very hard when you know these things, but we still have to obey God's commandment. Jesus said to love your enemies, do good to those who oppress you those that curse you. <laughs> I know it's hard. It is so hard, especially when Jesus is showing us all these things that they're doing. You're just like, what in the world? Do these people really plan these evil things? How could anyone do this? We don't understand it because we weren't raised by their parents. Okay. They were raised by wicked. It says that they're, they're sons of the sorceress. So when you're reading Revelation and you see the sorcerers, these are sons of the sorceress. You know, they, they grew up. I know somebody who taught her child and she had crystals. Crystals are one of the things God is against div diviners. He's against divination. Um, and she had crystals and she was teaching her, her son to stick out his tongue like a serpent, which we see in Isaiah. Who is this that, that sports himself and sticks out there, opens their mouth wide and sticks out their tongue. This is who she's, he's talking to. And eventually that child became a vessel for the wicked one. So it's not a good thing. It's terrible. And you could see now, you know, the different things that's going on. Now, God, there are some children who had believed in Jesus. And um, you, you cannot be possessed of a devil, but you can be oppressed. You cannot be afflicted and oppressed by the devil. Um, but he cannot possess a, a true born again, uh, Holy Ghost filled uh, saint. Uh, okay, so verse Psalm 37, verse 7 through 9. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way. These ones are the rich men. Remember, it says in Revelation of Jesus Christ, the mighty, the merchant men, the sorcerer that deceived all the nations. They are mighty. They're merchant men. They're rich. Some of them are, are the lower level sorcerers. And they're not as rich as the upper ones. I guess you have to do pretty evil stuff to be high up. That's what they say. Okay, so because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass, cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. Doesn't this sound like Jesus? For evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. So don't worry, beloved. They will be cut off. We will inherit the earth. Okay, we've got to keep reading. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Ah, 
when the wicked it says when the wicked um are or when the um when the basest of men are exalted the wicked walk on every side and that's where we're at right now the the, the basest of men are exalted so the wicked are walking all over the place the policy makers are wicked their their judges are um judges of darkness unjust judges unequal balances are in their hand jesus said that don't take your your anything into their wicked courts because <laughs> we have to trust in God. If you ever have to go to court, you have to trust in God to put the right judgment in them, you know, because he's the only one that could do that. Just like with um, the devil um, or Balak or someone wanted um, ba Balak or Baal. I can't remember. Some one of them wanted the other one to curse Israel, but God put a blessing in his mouth. <laughs> so you have to do that. You have to pray that God will bless you through those unjust judges <laughs> and you could even go to the unjust judge and ask him to give you vengeance right isn't that what um you just keep pressing in you know give me vengeance for mine enemies you know but jesus is going to do that hallelujah the word of god okay we're on verse 12 the wicked plotteth against the just so they plan evil and gnasheth upon him with his teeth Ooh, the lord shall laugh at him for he seeth that his day come is is coming the day of the wicked is coming, beloved. Don't worry. Don't fear. His day is coming. The wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy. So I remember I told you in a previous video a long time ago that the Greek fraternities and sororities carry Bibles. They become the priests in the land. Um, the, the devil's priests. There are God's priests too. God has sent his priests. But these ones use the scriptures in unrighteousness meaning they're not really born again and they twist the word cunningly with cunning craftiness i think that's in timothy um god says that they are you know using the word in unrighteousness and they twist the scriptures to make a false prophecy or to uh to get you uh pour gall on you a gall of bitterness um to pour lies and using the scripture in wicked ways I saw this one Greek fraternity guy, he had a Bible and, you know, I, I have seen all their abominations. I watch these Greek fraternities and what they do and it is abomination. I told you about our sister in Christ who joined a Christian a club on campus and she told me that the leader of that club said that you could lie as a Christian. And she said, no, you can't in front of all these people. And she said, no, you can't. Christians don't lie. We're not supposed to lie. That's a sin. And, um, and he, cause he was teaching them and it's okay to lie, beloved. We don't, that's not what a, a righteous child of God does. God says in the scriptures that his children have no lies in them. Okay. There's no lie in his children. So for him to change the image of God is a cunning, crafty work. Come to find out he was a Greek fraternity. Okay. So I had this Greek fraternity boy come up to me as I was giving the gospel and speaking the word of God. And I had, he had a Bible in his hand. And as soon as he started talking, his tongue ta started flickering right in front of me when I said something, when I said a scripture. It says that God will crush them and they will break out into a viper or a serpent. So remember Matthew 23, he said, ye serpents. So Jesus crushed them with the word. Okay, that's what the word does. It's like he's a rock. He says, Jesus is the rock of our salvation. <laughs> Hallelujah. So he's going to crush them with the sword of his mouth. But the wicked use the sword to deceive. Anyways, we got to stop this one. We'll go on to the next one. God be loved to you, beloved.